In this video, we will show you how to replace your radiator cooling fan on this Honda Accord. This will be located along the front of your engine compartment. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your cooling system is cool to the touch. Assuming it is cool, you want to carefully press down on your radiator cap and turn that counterclockwise to remove it. We'll lift this up and away from our face, of course, just in case there is any pressure. A quick inspection of the seal and set it aside. Now let's make our way safely under the front of the vehicle so we can drain the coolant. Under the front center of the vehicle, you're going to find the petcock, which is the drain for your radiator. You can find it in this rectangular port on your lower splash shield. Make sure you have a collection bucket under this area so you can recycle the fluid properly. We'll take hold of this valve at the end here, turn this counterclockwise. Once it starts loosening, fluid should start making its way out. Allow your coolant to drain. Once your coolant has finished draining, we'll continue on to closing up that drain. Just want to turn that clockwise until it's completely bottomed out. Double check, make sure that's secure, clean up your mess. Let's start removing our lower splash shield. To remove the splash shield, you'll find that it has several 10 millimeter headed bolts holding it in place. We'll start over on the driver's side. On the driver's side of the vehicle, looking under here in the wheel well area, you're going to find that you have a 10 millimeter bolt facing straight down. And then a little bit forward from there, you have one that goes from side to side. Inspect your mounting hardware as you remove it, replace it as necessary. Get this one over here. Now there is mounting hardware that makes its way across the center, but typically it's a good idea to remove both sides mounting hardware before you move to the center. Over on the passenger side, you're only going to have one piece of mounting hardware, and typically this is a plastic push clip. Push clips come out in different ways, but typically you just want to use a trim tool. Remove the center portion, and then remove the outer portion as well. A quick inspection of your push clip, of course, to make sure it is reusable. And now we can continue on with our mounting hardware, making our way across the vehicle. Now we can remove some 10 millimeter headed mounting bolts. Take hold of the shield, give it a wiggle, and remove it from the vehicle. Quick inspection and we'll set that aside. Let's start removing the mounting bolts for the radiator cooling fan. You'll find that you have a 10 millimeter right here and a 10 millimeter right there. We'll use some penetrant in these areas. This one's a little bit difficult to get to. I'll be using a ratcheting wrench. If you were to look along the center of the radiator along the backside here, you're going to find a 10 millimeter headed bolt tucked up inside this portion. We'll be using a 10 millimeter wrench. Let's get this one over here now. This one looks very rusted, might break on us. Let's move up in this area now. You're going to find an electrical connector for the cooling fan. It does have a locking tab. Go ahead and squeeze in on that, disconnect it, and a quick inspection for corrosion. There we are. That looks good. 
Along the front of the vehicle, we're going to remove the two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold this AC line bracket in place. Take hold of the bracket and flip it towards the rear of the vehicle. Now we can start removing the two 10 millimeter headed bolts that hold our AC fan to the radiator. Now it's time to remove the upper radiator hose from the radiator. We'll loosen our 8mm headed clamp just enough that we can slide the hose out of the way, a quick inspection of the hose, and we'll move along. Keep in mind there could be coolant still in this area, you want to be extremely careful. Double check to make sure that hose is soft and pliable and not torn, worn, or damaged. We'll set that aside. Now we'll take hold of the fan assembly and start lifting it up and out of here. You may have to flex your AC lines as you do so. There it is, friend. We'll carefully take this and slide it down into place, being extremely careful for that radiator. Once again, if you need to flex the AC lines, you can do so. Just be careful not to cause any damage. As we bring it down, we're going to be paying attention to the alignment points. We want to make sure that they fit over those bolts. We want to be as close to the radiator as possible. Once you feel as though you do have it slid into the proper position, go ahead and take hold near the center. Give it a little tug, trying to pull it away along the bottom. Assuming that feels as though it's secured, we'll continue up along the top. This in here. Try to get our other mounting bolt in. Start them in, snug them up, torque those to five foot pounds. Make sure we have our reservoir hose in place. Resecure your AC line. We want to get that bracket in place. Start in each of your two mounting bolts and snug them up. Get that upper radiator hose in place. See hose on both sides of that clamp. If this bracket came dislodged, go ahead and swing that over. That should slide onto the AC line, essentially holding the two together. We'll make our way under the passenger side front of the vehicle. It's time to reconnect the electrical connector. Take hold of that, carefully press it down into proper position. Little tug to make sure that's properly secured. Along the bottom of this area, we already have a couple of our mounting bolts in. We still have the one towards the center to start in. We had a little bit of a difficulty from the top. We'll do it from the bottom. Make our way over here with our 10 millimeter. We'll tighten up our lower mounting bolt for the engine fan. Let's get our splash shield on here. 
For the splash shield, you want to make sure that it goes underneath the forward shield along each of the three places for the mounting hardware. There we are. With that in place, we can start in the mounting hardware. We're not going to tighten any of this until we have all of the mounting hardware started in. Make our way over towards the passenger side now, same process. This one in here. Let's get this push clip in here. For the push clip, you want to press in the outer portion first and lock it in by the center. Now we can snug up those 10 millimeter headed bolts. Make our way into the corner here. Let's get the last one. Let's make our way back up under the hood. It's time to fill the cooling system. When you fill the cooling system, it's important to make sure that you use the manufacturer's specified fluid and you want to make sure you burp out any air in the system. To easily insert the fluid, we'll be using a funnel. Other people will have a specialty tool that functions by using vacuum. Use this funnel system here, add some coolant, allow it to go in. Once you have that cooling system full, the next thing we'll do is remove the funnel from the top of this area and reinstall our radiator cap. Now that we finished filling the cooling system, the next thing that we need to do is run the vehicle to burp out any air. When doing so, we're going to allow the vehicle to run to get up to normal operating temperature. Once you hear the cooling fans turn on, you want to make sure that you have plenty of heat coming out of the vents. Turn off the vehicle, allow it to cool down again, and we're going to recheck the coolant level just to ensure that it's topped off up to the maximum right up along the top here. After that, you want to make sure you top off your overflow tank up to the maximum. Continue on to closing the hood and take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.